this evening on this beautiful warm day. Didn't you enjoy that warm weather that we had today? Wow, wow. I think it was, what is it, 62 over here-ish? 69, that's right. That's right, I, I thought it was, wow, praise the Lord. It was, I heard Jackson was 70, right, Brother Ramsey? 70 over there? Wow, that's great. Well, amen, amen. We get a little teaser, and then I hear something else is coming in a few days. But we won't say anything. That's right. That's right. All right, let's stand, please, and let's, uh, let's turn to number 175. 175 is just like his great love. We'll sing the first, third, and the fourth verse of number 175. Let's sing it out. Sing about the love of Jesus, our dear Savior. A friend I have called Jesus, whose love is strong and true, and never fails however it is tried. No It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. When sorrows clouds overtake me and break upon my head, when life seems worse than useless and I were better dead, I take my grief to Jesus then. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love on the fourth. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine. Of all His care and tenderness for this poor life of mine. His love is in and over all and with and waves open when Jesus whispers peace be still and rolls the clouds away it's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away it's just like Jesus to keep me day by day it's just like Jesus all along the way it's just like his great love for Jesus' love. Amen. Amen. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Brother Toller, would you direct us in prayer, please? Amen. You may be seated, and let's go to our song books again. Number 191, we'll sing all three verses of in my heart there rings a melody. Amen. Aren't you glad you're saved? Does your heart sing because you're saved? You have Christ in your heart. Amen. Let's sing all three verses. 191. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody. So 
get to that chorus, watch how I, in my heart, there rings a melody, okay? But got a smile on the third. Twill be my endless theme and glory. With the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony. When the courts of heaven ring, in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Amen, amen. Who said you can't have fun on Wednesday night church? Amen, amen. It's good to see some folks back. Good to see uh, the Ramseys made it back safely. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to our announcements right quick. And if you have a prayer request that you would like to share, if you would uh, have that in mind, we will be uh, taking those up in just a second. Also, uh, don't forget that uh, one, two, three. Oh, no. This Sunday's the Sunday. Miss Bunny, did you have to put this in the she had to, every year she puts this depressing announcement in the, in the bulletin board. It's all her fault. What? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, it's still her fault that we get one. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm giving her a hard time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Bunny, for all your great help. Um, don't forget that this Sunday, um, 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 this Sunday is uh, the Daylight Savings Time, and the, the pizza announced here is for the uh, bus routes. It's for the bus routes. So I uh, apologize if there's a misunderstanding. Um, so uh, just uh, keep that in mind. We're going to uh, have a, a nice, nice time. Uh, the, the bus routes, we had a rough time in, January, in February where we had to cancel the routes. The temperature was really cold, and so we wanted to do something for them uh, just to get back together and uh, to come back together as as route so we're just going to do something special for them we do have something special planned for the church uh coming up at the end of may so we will uh give that i uh, will make that announcement later on um ladies we're uh, planning the trip to ship shawana don't forget it's monday march 29th that's coming up in a couple weeks and i'm uh, looking forward to y'all having a lot of fun that day also uh, don't forget that we're doing the flowers the memory flowers for um a loved one or some of the that we want to remember for easter and if you'd like to uh, to uh, do something like that, we have a sign-up sheet in the bulletin bo in the foyer bulletin board. There's three choices: tulips, daffodils, or lilies. They're eleven dollars a piece. And if you'd like to do that, please sign your name there, uh, fill out the uh, the sign-up sheet, and then if you couldn't have your payment in by March 21st, uh, that would be a great um, great help. Also, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt for the kids on Sunday, April 4th. That's Easter Sunday. So uh, be, be telling your, your kids and grandkids and, and all of your relatives we're going to have a fun day for them. Um, everybody can help by bringing bags of individually wrapped candy for the hunt uh, by Wednesday, March 31st. Uh, so we know if we need to purchase some, okay? So uh, if you would just keep that in mind, all right? We've got a few announcements. Um, pray for, if you would um, write this down, pray for Sean um, Leitner. He had uh, eye surgery, and um, so uh, keep him in your prayers. He is recovering. Um, also, um, the prayer chain, there was a uh, request that went out for Fay. F-A-Y, Faye, she, um, it's from Christy Moody. Faye has a mass on her lung, and I'm not sure what that entails. So pray for Faye. That's all the information I have right now. Also for Miss Christy Moody, she sent a prayer request. Um, her boss's mother-in-law was just taken to the hospital, hospital for breathing issues. They think it's pneumonia, so that's a Miss Christy's boss's mother-in-law. If we could get any more possessive pronouns be great miss christie's mother's boss's dogs i'm kidding um, just because it's wednesday doesn't mean we can't laugh and have fun okay i don't want you to come here and say oh wednesday night church is boring even in prayer time we can have fun 
You know, when I was a kid, my, my favorite time of the church service was the announcements time. Because Pastor Gray was always cracking stuff up. He was always, I was as a kid just loving it. Anyways, okay. So, um, um, and I believe that's all that I have. Does anybody else have um, a prayer request that they would like to, um, to mention? Miss Jennifer. Miss Jennifer Mitchell, an unspoken. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Miss Toller. Do you know the missionary's name? Keith and Teresa Baker, missionaries in Haiti. And um, they are, say it, they're needing, they're very ill, they're needing some medicine. Excellent. Okay. Okay. All right, so it's Keith and Teresa Baker. They need some medical care in Haiti, and uh, it's a very dangerous situation. All right. And anybody else? Brother Tompkins. Sorry, Mr. Tompkins. So it's your sister. Okay, I'm sorry. Niece Sarah Passer. Sorry. Okay. All right, so that's uh, Miss Sarah Passo had a mini stroke, and so we're praying, praying for her. It's uh, Miss Tompkins' daughter, Crystal, um, and her pregnancy to be, uh, that the baby would be born healthy very soon. Isn't it, Miss Ramsey? Yeah, it is. Yes. So, Ms. Ramsey was sharing, um, I'm relaying this for the, those tuning in live stream. Um, Ms. Ramsey was uh, asking prayer for three requests. Scott Bray, uh, he is scheduled to come out of the hospital on Friday, but he is still got some recovery to do, so be in prayer for him. Kyle Shepard, uh, they, um, they just got back from Arizona, and uh, Kyle Shepard um, has COVID, so be in prayer for him. And then um, the Shepard's neighbor, uh, Mark, has heart issues and he's in the hospital you say he's in the hospital so be in prayer for him he's not saved let's but let's be in prayer for his salvation as well and uh and his his heart issues brother robinette Brother Robinette's asking prayer for his uh, friend, 
uh, at the Bible study that they go to. Um, Rick Wallace is his name. He lost his wife uh, last year, and he's uh, struggling, so we're going to be praying for him. Amen. Anybody else? Brother Ransom. Mm Mm-hmm. Brother Ramsey's asking prayer for his sister Angela and her surgery recovery and uh, that she will recover quickly. Anybody else? Amen. Um, Preacher, I want to mention just let's uh, keep Preacher in your prayers uh, just with his health. So um, we would like that, but just let's keep him in your prayers, in our prayers. Anybody else? Anybody have a praise they would like to share? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. So we'll do that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Miss Thomas. Yeah. I heard. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord for that. Relief. Amen. A little bit. Amen. Anybody else have a praise they would like to share? Yes, ma'am. On Monday, we enjoyed that uh, nice weather, treated the boys out, the little ones, to a, a park visit. They were pitted up for, for a park visit. And um, there was a, a very friendly uh, young mother there. And, uh, and we just, I was like, Melissa, you got to invite her friend day. Friend day's at the end of May, and she got her whipped out her phone and says, when is that? Okay, I'm going to put it on my calendar. We'll be there. I'm like, yeah, right. Amen. So. Be in prayer for her. Uh, her name's Morgan, and she's got a, a little one, uh, almost four years old. And uh, so praise the Lord. It was just a, a good contact, so hopefully we can uh, be able to see her here. Amen? All right. Yes, sir, Brother Brown. Amen. Uh, wow. Only two dozen? <laughs> They were behind the school, not in the pasture. Wow. Wow, I think they're waking up. Something. Amen. Something. Uh, You got a story? Oh, it's coming? Okay. All right. Brother Brad, Brother Thompson's going to tell us a story later. Amen. All right. Well, let's have our, let's uh, take a few minutes and uh, let's, uh, let's pray over these. Uh, Miss Melissa, would you play a, a hymn softly, and uh, we'll take a few minutes and we'll pray over these requests.
praise you for this time that you've given us to come together. I thank you so much, Lord, that you give us the avenue of prayer. Well, thank you so much that you listen to us. You say that to us to, to come to your throne. You want us to come. Lord, you, you welcome us. You invite us to come. Lord, we've got some heavy hearts. We've got some concerns, Lord, in our spirit. And I pray, Lord, that you please, more than anything, give us peace. Help us to, to know that you've heard our prayer and that you're going to answer it according to your will. Lord, I ask that you please these situations where people, their health is in the balance. Lord, I pray that you please touch their bodies, raise them up, show them divine healing, Lord. I pray, Lord, especially for the shepherd's neighbor, Mark, Lord, that you would bring salvation to him, Lord. Lord, as well all, as all the others, I pray that you please answer them according to your perfect will. Thank you so much for this time that you've given us to come together. Thank you for the freedom that you've given us. Lord, thank you so much for a church family, Lord, that would take, a, take advantage of this freedom that we have and be in the house of God and enjoy each other's company. Lord, one day we're going to be in heaven and we're going to be able to go to church as a church family and we're going to be able to sit at your throne and hear you speak. What a joy that will be. Lord, would you make tonight a little heaven on earth? Teach us something from your word. Take control of the service. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's grab our hymn books and sing one more song. Number 200, num number 200. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse of He's a Wonderful Savior to Me. He's a Wonderful Savior to Me. Isn't your Savior wonderful? Amen. Let's sing about it. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need in Him I always find. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. On the last, dearer grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Howdy. So uh, on the way here tonight, we come up to, on Katie Road, coming up to Norval Road, and I say to my wife, Kathy, just because she's there, uh, I love this time of night. I love this time of evening. Dusk, you know, all the pleasure of it. And I said, except for the deer like to come out. And right at that moment, as I'm pulling up to the corner, I look and there's two deer crossing the road, and they're looking at me like, <laughs> come on, Brad. <laughs> so they're out there. And then the third one started to come up, you know, so I think he was waiting for me. And he kind of went down, and I was expecting him to just bound out right into the side of my car or something like that. But he didn't. But so uh, be careful. Uh, tonight's letter is from uh, Brian C. Sharp, evangelist. Uh, and this is an excellent letter. The truth of this letter is one that's kept me in the Christian life. It's fixed, looking. Um, and, and it's... Uh, 
he's looking back over his ministry, and it's, it's just really nice, and it's the March-April letter. Dear pastor and praying friends, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. One might think the two words, run and patience, contradict each other. I mean, running seems to indicate in a hurry, and patience seems to indicate waiting a while. How does one run with patience? Comparing scripture, we find words such as, the race is not to the swift in Ecclesiastes 9.11. We also see in 1 Corinthians 9.24 that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. Obviously, there are different types of running. One type is to sprint and the other is for long distance. While some types of motivational preaching encourage the sprint type of running, the scripture focuses on the long distance type of running. This dovetails into faithfulness over a lifetime and not a flash in the pan, which soon fizz that soon fizzles once out of the gate of salvation or, mi or ministry. I started preaching in 1975 just after salvation. Counting that year till now means that this year will mark 47 years preaching in the Word of God, preaching the Word of God. Reflection often looks back on the highlights and not so low, and, and the not so highlights. Running with patience does not depend on one or the other. It depends upon keeping the eyes on the end goal. That goal is looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Several old friends have called recently. Most of them are preachers. Some are retired, some disabled, some just passed away days after our conversations. Many of them brought up the so-called highlights of the last 47 years of this evangelist ministry. One remembered the time I brought 233 people for one church service in Oklahoma. Another remembered over 100 people getting saved in Forest Park, Missouri in 1976. A third remembered 225 people got saved in one revival meeting preached in the St. Louis area. Another friend remembered over 50 men surrendering to preach in one service I preached in Illinois, having, 102, uh, having a 102 degree fever. Several remembered over 70 teenagers getting saved at an outdoor water park. Another preacher called to remind me of the 41 adults who walked the aisle for salvation one Sunday morning in New Jersey after I preached on the great white throne, T-H-R-O-W-N, judgment. <laughs> Several were present when various churches set record attendances after hosting an I Support Israel meeting. He's a great supporter of the country of Israel. He's done much work there. A couple of pastors recalled over 1,000 men attending the many scriptural right to bear arms meetings with hundreds saved. Still another estimated well over 10,000 saved as a result of the Revelation revivals. Obviously, those men remembered and rehearsed highlights. We agreed those were highlights, but there were many low light accounts too of what has happened over the years since this evangelist started preaching. We are reminded of times of blessing indeed, but that is not the end of our race, nor should it ever be. We are to continue running, perhaps not as fast as before, but still running nonetheless. The finish line is still in front and not in the rear view mirror. I like that. We should run longing to see his face and not depending upon highlights or lowlights to keep ourselves self-motivated. We should depend upon him to keep us running at the pace he has established. Since last prayer letter, I have preached in Kansas, Missouri, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Ohio. The elders have been filled with those making decisions to run the race with patience. Thank you all for your prayerful support. Still running and looking unto him. Evangelist Brian Sharp, Psalm 34, 6. That's a prayer. Lord, we do thank you for Brother Sharp. We've heard him preach here many times. And he's a tremendous man. He's been doing a great work for you. We thank you for this message about keeping our eyes on you, fixed on you, uh, not, not on the events of our lives, but on you, Lord. I thank you for this church that the devil's tried to knock down uh, th through the many years that uh, we just keep on going, Lord. And thank you for that. And thank you for the love you've shown us. And I just pray you'll bless tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Let's open our Bibles. Anywhere is good. Let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're going to get into our character of Christ. Bible studies, last uh, few weeks we've been doing uh, kind of a, a preface or an introduction uh, lesson. We were talking about being mighty in spirit versus mighty in intellect. And last week we talked about how that we can test if one is mighty in spirit. And uh, one of the tests is to try every spirit. One of the tests is to try every statement. And another test is to try the fruit of their life and actions. And uh, we talked about how that, that uh, God would, wants us to be, instead of mighty in intellect, he wants us to be mighty in spirit. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Amen. John 15 and verse 13. Um, there, if you have your, uh, your Bible study sheet at the bottom of the page, uh, we will be uh, filling in the blanks here. So uh, we will get into this. John 15, verse 13, it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. We're gonna, friends, we're going to talk about loyalty. 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 At the top of your page, you see the loyalty, and, it's, and it has the definition. Let's go ahead and fill that in, and then we'll pray, and uh, we'll learn about the great horned owl and then some folks in the Bible that, uh, that showed disloyalty and that showed loyalty, and we'll see some, uh, some lessons from that. Loyalty. So the definition here at the top, it says, using difficult, difficult times to demonstrate my commitment, my commitment Using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those and those using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve. Serve is the last blank. Using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve. To serve. Let's read about the great horned owl and then we'll pray. In the cold of February, a mother owl sets out in search for a proper nest for her brood. Snow covers the north woods, but she pays little attention to it. It is freezing, but she has a purpose in mind. She needs a nest. And after a long, grueling search, finds an old crow's nest that passes her inspection. After fixing it up, after fixing it up a bit with some branches and breast feathers, she lays her three eggs. This early nesting in the freezing cold was uncommon in the wild, but necessary for her. The cold days and freezing nights were brutal for the mother owl. She was busy keeping her eggs warm. All the while, it was snowing around her, but she would not budge. She went without eating. She did not le dare leave the eggs for any amount of time for fear of them freezing and losing them. Although the snow was clinging to her feathers, she was dedicated to see her job through. For four weeks, she endured this torture. Finally, she was rewarded. Three beautiful owlets hatched and began screeching for food. Now began the next task of keeping them fed. Both parents hurriedly searched for food. Because of nesting early, prey was easy to spot along the frozen and barren ground. In three short months, these owlets would grow from three inches to over two feet. That is why it was so important that a nest be found early. The mother owl showed loyalty to her young ones by enduring the hardships of the frozen winter, going without food, and adjusting her schedule to serve the needs of her outlets. Heavenly Father, I praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. Lord, I ask that you would please take these qualities, these, these qualities of Jesus Christ, and that you would help us, Lord, to learn these qualities and make them a part of our lives. Lord, that, that we, would, we would emulate his character. I pray, Lord, that you please fill me with your Holy Spirit, that you would please guide my thoughts, that you would please help us to learn something from the word of God tonight. I pray that you please meet with us this evening. May these be beneficial. May these touch hearts and lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel. We're going to read a story here from, from the Bible. These are these, uh, these qu character quality lessons. Um, I was uh, I, I came across some information and found out that that when uh, Boris Yeltsin, the president of Russia, when Russia was 
going from communism and uh, communism was was uh, being undone in Russia that that his his great fear was that his people would not know what to do with freedom and so uh, he 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 consulted with someone and they they came up it was a Christian and they came up with these character qualities or these character qualities they were given to the to the leadership over there and and the the the, the thrust was that with their independence with it, it's like the children of Israel coming out of slavery and not knowing how to live independently not knowing how to govern your own life because everything's already all, always been dictated and not knowing how to dictate for yourself and that was his 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 fear and uh, this this uh, these character qualities these these truths were given to the 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 uh, Russian country to help them help their citizens become people of character so uh, I'm, I'm excited about uh, going over these these are going to be f fascinating so let's go to second Samuel second Samuel chapter 20 second Samuel chapter 20 the, uh, the definition of loyalty using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve I love it I love what I heard about our president Donald Trump where he said uh, one time he he had lost everything and he he he, he was at the uh, financial um, brokenness and he lost a lot of friends lost a lot of friends but also a lot of people came and rallied around him during that time and he learned who his true friends were during that time when he was at his lowest and that's what loyalty is loyalty is whenever you whenever it's difficult th those who those who uh, gather around you those who rally around you those are the ones that 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 uh, that are showing that that character quality of loyalty and it reminds me of Jesus Christ when we're at our lowest who is the person that we can always go to it can be our Jesus it can be our Jesus amen Amen. So let's read this, uh, this story about Amasa. Amasa is, is a, uh, not a very well-known character in the Bible, but uh, he has got a very special place. There was, in, in, in his time frame where, where he's mentioned in the Bible, there was a lot of disloyalty going on. Where let's, look, let's look at some, some um, uh, evidences of it. We're going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. It says, And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite, and he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, <clears throat> neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And the, but the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan, even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servant and pursue after him, lest he get him fence cities and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men and the Cherethites and the Pelethites and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at a great stone, when they were at the great stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them, and Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and it, upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof. As he went forth, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Amasa, art thou in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him there with, within the fifth rib and shed out his bowels to the ground and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favoreth Joab and he that is for, da for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in his blood in the midst of the highway. When the, men, when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Mesa out of the highway into the field and cast a cloth upon him. When he saw that everyone that came by him stood still, when he was removed out of the highway, all the people went 
on after Joab to pursue after Sheba, the son of Bichri. Amen. Point number one here in the, in the lesson here. Let's get to the, to the lesson. I'd like to get through this, uh, this story here in this part. Uh, this is probably going to be a, a couple weeks. And uh, we're we comparing these, these two men that we have here in the Bible. The first section, it says Amasa's loyalty. Number one, a history of disloyalty. A history of disloyalty. The background of this story, we have uh, letter A, in the treason of Absalom. You have the time where, where, where Absalom uh, betrayed his dad and took over the kingdom. Number one, his full sister, Tamar, was mistreated by a half-brother, his half-brother Amnon. And in Absalom's eyes, David seemingly did nothing about it. In Absalom's eyes, David seemingly did nothing about it. And so Absalom designed a plot to kill Amnon, who had shamed his sister and removed and, and shamed his sister and removed his nearest rival to his father's throne. There was sadly this was this was brewing in the in the family of David, where where the, the, he had these these sons and and there was. There was some treason and some, uh, some uh, Absalom was, was trying to do things behind his back and steal the heart of the king, kingdom from his father. Number four, Absalom also planted seeds of disloyalty among those who were discontent in his father's kingdom. And you see that after that in the scriptures, you find that David fled Jerusalem because he was utterly defeated. Before he was utterly defeated. David fled Jerusalem. So we have Absalom, who is one of, the, one of the men who was disloyal and treasonous during this time. Here's another example of disloyalty that was in the kingdom. You remember that, uh, that uh, David had a counselor. What was his name? Ahithophel, right? You remember that from, the, from history? Uh, letter B, a counselor seeks revenge. A counselor seeks revenge. Ahithophel joined Absalom when he took over his throne. How in the world could a man who is a counselor for such a great king, how could he join a treasonous, uh, a, a, a betraying son who tried to usurp the throne without having the blessing of his father? Well, let's find out. Number two, Ahithophel was David's former counselor. Was David's former counselor. Number three, here's, the, here's one of the keys. Ahithophel was also Bathsheba's grandfather. Was also Bathsheba's grandfather. Number four, it appears that Ahithophel now finally got his chance to exact vengeance on David for, one, shaming his granddaughter and killing his grandson-in-law. For shaming his granddaughter and killing his grandson-in-law. You see the perfect recipe for disloyalty, bitterness. Bitterness. Number five, Ahithophel sides with Absalom and advises him to attack David immediately to gain the sure victory. To gain the sure victory. And then there's another counselor which was actually sent back by David, a spy of David. Another counselor suggests that the whole nation be gathered to go against David even though it would take more time. And then you see in the, in the story, when Ahithophel saw his counsel was rejected, he went home, put his house in order, and hung himself. And hung himself. You think about how could a person like Ahithophel, how could they uh, uh, commit suicide when somebody doesn't follow your suggestion? It was just it was the it was the what they call the straw that broke the camel's back. It was a, it, it, he just had too much. He he was so bitter about what David had done to Bathsheba, and how he had he the heartbreak that and the shame that came to his family, couldn't let it go. So we have Absalom. He was a, a treasonous, disloyal son. We have a counselor who is seeking revenge. Number uh, letter C, the rebels, con the rebels' cousin is chosen to lead the army. The rebels' cousin, Absalom's cousin, is chosen to lead the army. Number one, Ab Amasa was Absalom's cousin. Amasa was Absalom's cousin. Number two, Joab and Ab Abishai were putting together an army of loyal men to fight for David. 
they were putting together a army of loyal men to fight for David. David gave strict orders, do not hurt Absalom. Do not hurt Absalom. But sadly, Joab found Absalom hanging in a tree in the forest by his long hair and murdered him by throwing three darts into his heart. Number five, Amasa and his troops flee to their homes. And then you see how that, it's now that Absalom is gone, David is coming back. Letter D, David makes a change. You see, David found out that Joab disobeyed his orders about Absalom. And so he demotes Joab and chooses Amasa, the defeated leader of his former enemy, as his new general. And Amasa offers the other ten tribes by being overly, offends the other ten tribes by being overly ambitious in bringing David back and excluding them. And so in this chapter, chapter 20, we see letter E, a new rebel leader appears on the scene. A new rebel leader appears on the scene. Number one, Sheba appoints himself as king during this argument. Sheba appoints himself as king. Number two, David tells Amasa to mobilize an army in three days to defeat Sheba to avoid civil war. David tells Amasa to mobilize an army in three days to defeat Sheba to avoid civil war. Number three, Amasa does not complete the assignment on time. Amasa does not complete the assignment on time. Number four, Amasa now forces David to weaken the protection, weaken the protection in Jerusalem by sending his personal army to defeat Sheba. So, number five, Amasa, Amasa rushes into the battle and is met by Joab. Met by Joab. Joab uses a greeting gesture to murder his replacement. Joab, he's a Bible study all in, all in himself. He was always doing his own thing, kind of uh, just, just his own tangent. It's, reminds me of some three-letter agencies that we have in our country. <laughs> we won't get into that one. Number seven, Amasa's disloyalty cost him his life. Amasa's disloyalty cost him his life. He sided with the wrong crowd. He sided with the, 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 the folks who were not after the anointed of God. So here we have Amasa's character sketch. Why was he disloyal to his uncle David? Why was he disloyal to his uncle David? It is possible that his cousins, Joab and Abishai, and others in the royal family treated him with contempt. You see, Amasa is the son of Abigail, David's sister, and Ithra, an Ishmaelite. He was an illegitimate child. He was, he was not completely Israelite. He was what they would call like a Samaritan would be. This could have been a cause of resentment and disloyalty to God for being a family, quote, outcast family outcasts. Number four, this would explain his siding with Absalom, another family outcast. This would explain his siding with Absalom, another family outcast. Letter B, why did Amasa fail to keep his appointment with David? Why did Amasa fail to keep his appointment with David? It is likely that the men of Judah were not as quick to follow Amasa. We're not as quick to follow a Mesa. Judah is the blank there. Number two, his inability to attract followers caused him to disregard David's orders and take more time to recruit men. His inability to attract followers caused him to disregard David's orders and take more time to recruit men. Number three, Ahithophel had warned Absalom of the same mistake. Ahithophel had warned Absalom of the same mistake. And so we see that Amasa sacrificed the advantage of speed and surprise for the advantage of numbers. He sacrificed the advantage of speed and surprise for the advantage of numbers. Number five, Amasa was doing things his way and in his time, never realizing that his act of disloyalty would cost him his life. 
His act of disloyalty would cost him his life. You see, this was a very treacherous time. This was a very tense time in the nation of Israel. And, and speed was of essence. And Amasa, he, he, he had, the, he had this, this uh, disloyalty in his heart. He had this, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it whenever you are given an order that you're not really behind this kind of uh, lackadaisical, this non-enthusiastic uh, fire in you. And so, and so you're kind of doing things at your own pace. And Amasa, he, he almost ended up costing David the kingdom by the grace of God, they were able to, to recuperate, but Amasa, he, sh- he showed this, and he, it cost him uh, dearly for that. It cost him his life. On the other hand, we see that, uh, that in Esther, if we go to, go to the book of Esther, and we'll just uh, get, a, get a few uh, uh, blanks into here. Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2, verse 21. Esther chapter 2 and verse 21, we talk about Mordecai and his loyalty. In those days while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlain, Bigthan and Tiresh, of those which kept the door were wroth and sought to lay hand on the king of Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it, unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Mordecai, he had a legend of loyalty. He was a legend of loyalty, the, uh, number one there under Mordecai. He was a legend of loyalty. You see, letter A, Mordecai learned from his fa- forefathers' disloyalty to God. You see, he was a captive in Babylon. They, th- his forefathers were disloyal to God. They had abandoned God, and now he was suffering the consequences of because of their disloyalty to God. Letter B, Jeremiah had preached that rebellion against God-ordained authority was the real reason Israel was taken into captivity. If we can learn anything in the Christian life is, is the fact that God recognizes a chain of command. He recognizes a chain of command. And God, sometimes he will give you bad authorities and leaders with with glaring, uh, with glaring uh, um, bad qualities. He will do that on purpose because what he's trying to do is he's trying to he's trying to see what's in your heart. The ones who are underneath, the ones who who have to deal with the bad authorities over them and their bad decisions and their unwise decisions. He wants to see when, when you're pressed, what's going to come out. When you're in a tight situation, when you're hurting, when, when, when the pain comes on you, what's going to come out? Is it going to be bitterness or is it going to be praise or what's it going to be? And so God works with the chain of command. And, and that's something that Jeremiah, he preached to the people and he tried to warn them, hey, listen, God recognizes authority. That's why it's, it's so important that, 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 the, that the, the, the husband be the, be the head of his house and the woman, she, she may have areas where she's better and she's got, got greater uh, strengths in some areas, but God has put the man over the woman. That's just what God set up in the Garden of Eden. I'm sorry, but that's just what he did. And, and it doesn't mean that one is inferior or superior to the other. That's just the chain of command that God, that God, that God put up, that set up. And so Jeremiah, he was, he was preaching, and he was teaching the folks about authority. Let us see. Jeremiah had predicted a curse to those who would not serve the king of Babylon and a blessing to those who would. Could you, can you believe that? This preacher of Israel said, if you will serve the king of Babylon and you will do him good, God will bless you. That seems backwards. That, that doesn't make sense. But, but what he was trying to teach them is you need to listen to your authorities. You've, you've disregarded me for nearly 900 years as a nation. You, you've, you've, you've totally uh, ignored me. You've been after idols. You know, we, we made a contract. We made a marriage contract on, the Mount, on Mount Sinai. I married you as a nation, and I set up some laws that you would serve me, and yet you have been out from under my authority all this time. 
So you're going to serve the king of Babylon, and you're going to, this king of Babylon, he adores every idol that you can think of. And so you're going to, you're going to see what it's like to serve what you really want, and that's a total idolatrous person. And see how sickening it is. And God said, because the whole reason I put you under this yoke of iron is because you need to learn how to submit to authority. It was all that chain of command. It's all, it's all an indication of, of where does your heart lie. Is it loyal or is it disloyal? Letter D, he was aware of God's hatred of rebellion against authority. He was aware of God's hatred of rebellion against authority. I heard somebody tell a story about this, uh, this uh, Christian young man who went to public school. And, uh, and he, he was... He was uh, he w- he had always desired to go to a Christian school. And, and uh, the youth director, his youth director said, hey, listen, there's, this is an op- there's an opportunity for him to go to a Christian school. Was talking to, to his parents, his, his dad specifically, this boy's dad. And, and, the, and uh, the dad wasn't saved. They didn't go to church. But uh, this young man, uh, he was a Christian young man, had an opportunity to go to a Christian school. The youth pastor said, hey, can, can, can your son go to Christian school? He was, uh, there's an opportunity for him to be able to go to Christian school. And his dad said, no, I don't think he ought to go to Christian school. And the youth pastor was like, that doesn't make sense. Why, 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 why shouldn't he go to Christian school? And, 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 and the dad said, because, he, he, because if he were to go to Christian school, he'd be, become more of a hypocrite than what he is already. Because when he comes home, he comes home and he looks down on us because we don't go to church and he does. And, 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 and he named a, a variety of things. And he said he needs to go to public school so they can rough him up so that he can keep it, so he can get knocked down a few notches and realize how the, how the world lives. And, and the, the youth pastor said, you know what, you got a point. This kid got a problem with authority. And if he gets taken out of this place that's going to that's gonna keep him grounded, then his, his head's going to get so big and so prideful, oh, I'm... I'm, I'm and, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. God recognizes authority. God looks at authority, and he, 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 he hates rebellion against authority. Letter E, he was aware of God's creativity in working through even the cruelest of kings to accomplish his purpose. Think about Cyrus, king of Persia, Ezra. If you look at, I believe it's Ezra, the first verse of Ezra says, but God stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to build the house of the Lord God in Israel. This wicked pagan king, God, God stirred up the spirit of this wicked pagan king to do something for him. Who's going to get the glory for that? It's going to be him. It's going to be him. And that's what God's all about. Letter F. Ahasuerus was the son of Cyrus. Ahasuerus was the son of Cyrus. Letter G. He inherited the, the Babylonian Empire. Can you imagine that? And can you imagine inheriting the United States? Inheriting all the United States. But he inherited the Babylonian Empire. Letter, letter H, he was cruel. He sliced a man's son in half, half after agreeing to not make him serve in his army. This is how cruel and ruthless this was. The, 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 the father of that man begged, or uh, the, the, the parents of that man uh, in, in Ahasuerus' army begged, please don't send him to another, please don't send him to another battle. So Ahasuerus said, okay, he don't have to go. That's not what we were talking about, but that's how cruel he was. Letter I, Mordecai overheard a plot to assassinate Ahasuerus. Mordecai overheard a plot to assassinate this ruthless, evil man. But what did Mordecai do? Letter J, he told the king about it and saved his life. He told the king about it and saved his life. You see, God, he, he recognizes authority. He, God knows, God knows, and you may be able to spot and be able to name some authorities in your life that, one, have, have let you down. They're not as, they're, they're, they, they've got some holes in their character or some holes in, in, in you know, whatever their qualifications are. And you could probably, you could probably name and You could probably, you know, write their names and say, you know what, this person, they're not qualified to do X, Y, and Z, but did God put them there? God, God, put, God puts them there for a reason because he wants to see where's your heart. And when all of our hearts down, down at the bottom, when, we're, when the followers, when all of their hearts are right toward their authority and right toward God, 
Then God says, okay, everybody down here is okay. Now I can deal with the authority. Bam! And he can knock that authority's head right to clean off of him and spank him and, get, and deal with him. But he's waiting for everybody down here. Don't, don't be backbiting the authority. Don't be, don't be uh, disloyal. Don't be, don't be undercutting him because God says, well, I'm, I'm not going to deal with him until till y'all get right because y'all got a problem too. And so God, he's, he's very, very meticulous about this chain of command, this chain of command. And God wants uh, uh, loyalty. He does not want disloyalty. And a lot of times, out of the, what, is, what does the Bible say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When you're in a pressure situation and what pops out of your mouth, the only reason it popped out of your mouth is because it was in your heart. And so if we inundate our heart with the word of God, if we bathe ourselves in the word of God and we drown ourselves with the word of God, God will keep those, those uh, 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 tense feelings from being in our heart. He will keep peace in our heart so that when we are pressed, the goodness comes out and the grace of God and the spirit of God comes out. But we've got to fill ourselves with that first. We've got to fill ourselves. God's, God is very, like I said, God is very meticulous about authority and our loyalty to the people God puts in over us. You see, you know, uh, I, have the, I have the privilege of, of being your pastor, but I, you know, I have to confess that, uh, that be, be, this, is, this is still new for me. This is all new for me, and there's, there's many times where I, I feel like I let you down more than I, more than I bless you, and I feel, I, I feel, man, there's, there's, there's better qualified preachers out there. My goodness, as, as a, as a, as an assistant pastor under a pastor, I didn't have all the pressures of, of having to make a lot of decisions, a lot of questions coming to me, and, and, and affecting people's lives by my decisions. I could say, you know, go talk to Pastor, go talk to Pastor Ortiz, and I could just say, you know what, I'm just going to do my job and just focus on that, and he can deal with it. But now it's the the tables are turned, and and it's amazing once you once you get into that position where you're you're having to answer and be responsible and shepherd a lot of families, a lot of leaders, a lot of men, a lot of women. Your 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 thought process changes. God wants us to be loyal. God wants us to be loyal. And what is what is the definition of loyalty? Using, oh, did you put your lesson up already? Get it out. Here we go. Ready? What's the definition of loyalty? Using difficult times to demonstrate my commitment to God and those whom he has called me to serve. Did I say it right? Yeah. Good. I have it memorized. Amen. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to come together. I pray, Lord, that you please help us through these lessons. Help us, Lord, to, to learn them. Help us, Lord, to apply them. Help us, Lord, to 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 try to put these things to practice. Lord, you give us difficult times because you want us to see our heart. And you want us to compare our heart to Jesus and how would be we be like Jesus. When when we have difficult times, Jesus' heart, He's there with us. He's loyal to us when we don't deserve it. And Lord, when we're in difficult times, He uses those difficult times to demonstrate to us His loyalty to us. Lord, help us to be that way. Help us, Lord, to, to emulate the character of Christ. Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Let's all stand. We're going to have a time of invitation. Miss Melissa, if you would play a hymn of invitation, I encourage you to come and use the altar. Talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to, to help you be loyal and, and, and help you emulate the character of Christ.
grab our hymn books and go to number 356. We'll sing the first and last verse of I Must Tell Jesus. I Must Tell Jesus. The first and last verse of number 356. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me. Over the world of victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Now the definition in the verse, we're going to memorize them. The definition and the verse. So you'll have a quiz. You'll have a quiz when the next, when we finish this lesson, when the next, we're going to have a quiz, okay? So you don't, you don't want to fail Wednesday night Bible study because then you have to repeat and you have to just keep coming back. <laughs> How does that work? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, we have more Love Your Neighbor bags. And so if you need a couple more, feel free to, we're going to, Work at having them ready every service. So if you want to grab one or two, and uh, as you're going about your, your day tomorrow or between now and Sunday, just, uh, just be a blessing. Be a blessing and just love our neighbor every day. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap up with a, with a word of prayer. Brother Tony, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?